Welcome, dear friends, to the final concert of our spring series. We've had fun putting together these concerts for you over the last 15 months, but we are really ready for some live music, which we will be having this summer. Please keep checking our website and we will be announcing the season uh, sometime mid-May. We are very busy putting the final touches on the season. Our concert tonight consists of just one work, Brahms Piano Quintet in F minor. This work is a huge work in uh, scope, in sound, in emotional intensity, uh, in, in the color of the work. It's sometimes beautiful, it's sometimes very dark and brooding. This work started off actually as a string quintet, uh, but the reviews after the premiere were not that favorable. Uh, particularly from Clara Schumann, who uh, Brahms cared deeply about her impressions. He then rearranged it for two pianos, a sonata for two pianos, but people thought that it missed the grittiness uh, of the string playing and the beauty and the singing quality of the string playing. Finally, he then came to the version that we are going to hear tonight for piano and string quartet. It was a huge success. Um, and Brahms is usually very, very careful in his writing. But one can feel that in this particular work, he is just letting out his entire uh, heart and soul. It almost feels as if a lifetime came out in this work. Once Brahms had premiered the version as we know it today, he then destroyed the version for string quintet. Before we listen to the Brahms F minor quintet, uh, let's join Matt Lipman Viola and Anthony Marwood in a conversation about this work. I'm so happy to be able to uh, introduce two of our players on this program, Matt Lipman and Anthony Marwood. Uh, Matt playing the viola on this program and Anthony playing the violin. Uh, it's lovely to see you guys uh, again. And actually this performance of the Brahms F minor piano quintet was the very last concert that we did in the 2019 festival. Um, so it's our last concert since the world changed. So it's an incredible performance, but I also love sitting here talking to you because it brings back that night so very much. Welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> how, how are you both? Uh, Matt's got the, his viola in the background. He's been practicing away. And Anthony, I know, has been traveling and doing concerts in Europe, so things are getting back. Things are slowly getting back. Um, crossing borders is, is kind of complicated with quarantine. And, you know, I've had a lot of things shoved up my nose in, in the last <laughs> few weeks. I'm a little tired of that. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I'm literally tested every five five days at the moment. But I think this this period of craziness will, there is an end in sight. So we're, we're, we're hoping, we're hoping, we're hoping. It's also a unique situation to be in because for so long we had to get used to to basically doing nothing. Yeah. And now that things are all of a sudden starting to open all by slowly, a lot of the situations are, are you free in two weeks? Can you play like right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Yes. Really, I feel very lucky, but it's also all of a sudden very stressful. Yeah, it, it is. It is quite stressful. And, and, and it's so different to this time last year where when, when the initial lockdown happened, there was a, there was a corner of myself that, that was, was, actually quite relieved just to be forced to stop. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people had that feeling and it, it, it was it was it was sort of a privilege. And if you if you were happy to be in the place where you were and stop and you know I was in Sussex and with the garden and that was like an, an incredible privilege. Uh, then then it was then it was then it was wonderful. But I feel so differently now. I feel sort of so ready to yeah. play and celebrate and connect. No, that's true. Well, certainly you guys connected with this performance of the Brahms F minor. Matt, I'm curious. I mean, this piece is such an incredibly wonderful piece. What is the is it about it that you love the most? Or uh, tell me your feelings when you play this piece. Sure. So the Brahms Quintet is a, definitely a favorite of mine. Um, the first time I ever played it was actually with Leon Fleischer. So my history with the piece started pretty, pretty high. Um, and of course, getting to, to work on it, everything was very slow. I think he was 
85 at least at that point but to dissect it with such a genius was was it, it my journey with the piece just started very well but what strikes me a lot about that piece is um much of Brahms's chamber music comes from a later period than this quintet mm -hmm. and so if you think about it in that context this quintet has a lot of fire and passion and it's I would say more warm slash hot blooded than many of his chamber works that we're used to. Um, and so that's what I love about it. It's in the key of F minor, which um, is very kind of storm and drong, uh, has that kind of flavor. Um, and of course, the, the scherzo, the very famous scherzo um, is a perfect example of, of that. I just love it. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a wonderful piece. And, you know, this F minor, it is a dark piece. And yet, Anthony, I don't know whether you feel this, but it's so passionate and it is so intense and at the same time, sort of crazy joyous. It's, it's, it's an unusual piece. Yeah, Brahms really, he really reveals a lot of his inner soul in this piece, I think. And as, as quite often with, with him, it, the, the journey towards the finished pro product, so-called, uh, it was not easy. You know, he tried different routes and came, you know, he tried writing it as a, as a string quintet, uh, like uh, Schubert. So he tried it as a two piano version. He listened to his, his colleagues and friends who cajoled him and, 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 and praised him and made suggestions. And then finally, suddenly, he, 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 he found the right medium for this sort of very emotionally untidy um, work, I think. I mean, it's, 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 it's kind of unbridled. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it, it took somehow the forces of four string players and a piano to give it that kind of uh, weight and, and, and scope, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he, 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 he poured a lot of them. And there are so many extremes of emotion and key in it as well. There is the darkness, but the darkness is almost more noticeable because there is that amazing um, slow movement in a, in that totally different color mm. uh, uh, in that key. So you really feel the, the, the going from light to dark in a very, very kind of turbulent, extreme way. Mm. No, you're absolutely right. And, and when was the first time, Anthony, you, that you played this work? I, I, I really didn't play it for a very long time. Uh, first time I played it, I think, was I, I, I played second violin in it. And then it was, it was a really long time before I kind of... Um, I don't know, it was one of the late arrivals in my life, let's, mm. let's say. And I, I wasn't even, I didn't, I wasn't in love with the piece before I played it as, as perhaps that's unexpected. I don't know. I think, I think there was something, something, you know, when there's, it can sometimes work with food this way. And sometimes with people, that the food and people that you end up really loving a great deal. It doesn't always start out. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there's this sort of cusp of being of, of love and not so much love. <laughs> and that, for me, that was it was like this with this piece. But once I was in it and I was connected to it and I felt I understood. I think also I, I, I was looking maybe initially I was looking for Beethoven or something, which was a complete lost cause. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I think I think it's much more looking towards Schubert on, on, on the one in the one direction and, and, and maybe, you know, towards Mahler in the other direction or something. I think I think I just didn't kind of get it. Mm -hmm. But then once I was inside it and, and playing with um, lovely colleagues like Bridgehampton, <laughs> that is very, it, you know, you have to have the right, you're only as good as the people you're playing with, let's face it. Well, I, I, I do think this performance is quite wonderful. And as huge in scope and um, 
in emotion and form. Um, and as dark as it is, the minute you guys finished the work on stage, Matt, you were snugging someone on stage. It's just a, lo it's a lovely moment because you were all feeling this emotion and this togetherness uh, after the performance, which only a piece like the Brahms you would feel because it does get inside you and you get inside it. It definitely f feels like a journey when you finish it. But I also have to speak to what Anthony just briefly mentioned, which is the wonderful colleagues that were on the stage with us. Um, when you have a group where everybody in the group is vibing on the same page, there's nothing quite like that. And um, the performance can reach a, a new height when everybody is kind of in this state of flow, which I certainly felt like. Yeah, I was probably the one holding everybody down. But for me, it was, um, it really felt like it reached a new height that um, I had never experienced before with that piece. And of course, at the end, I can't help but smile because it was something that, you know, expressed like all of my humanity, this experience. So it was oh, so, that's so wonderful. Yeah. And, and when you when you say vibing together like it's like that is it and isn't that the very thing we've missed so much in this yes. in this time I find it very poignant uh, that that this was the last piece at Bridgehampton before that's that's kind of ex it's amazing to revisit that now just as we turn towards maybe more optimism it is this was the very last concert and the very last piece on the last concert in 2019. Uh, we then had the spring series that was canceled because we all in March, then we had the next summer canceled, the next fall, and then the next spring canceled. So uh, we are all so happy because uh, we are now going to have a summer season. Matt will be joining us. Unfortunately, Anthony, you're not able to join us this summer. Yeah, I'm going to uh, miss you. I know. <laughs> Well, listen, guys, it's lovely to uh, speak with you. Um, we're now going to um, play the Brahms F minor piano quintet. And Anthony and Matt will be joined by Yura Lee on the violin, uh, Paul Watkins on cello, and Gilles Van Sattel on piano. And this is in four movements, and we hope you enjoy it. Thank you.
thanks so much for joining us for today's concert and all the other concerts we've sent out over the last 15 months. But we really can't wait to see you this summer, music as we know it. Keep safe and healthy, and we'll see you in the summer. Bye-bye.